Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. We're here again in the IXEG 737-300. My name's Graham, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the final parts of descent planning and uh, a go around uh, from a manually flown approach as well. We're back in uh, Spain on the approach to uh, Barcelona, and uh, one of the videos I've recently uploaded is uh, a ground school video on descent planning. What we're going to do is uh, fly a reasonably straight in approach in the aircraft and just try and consolidate uh, what we've looked at on the ground school video. So we're approximately uh, 10,000 feet or so. Aircraft's all configured for the arrival. Everything's loaded in the box as it should be. And I've got the uh, VOR tuned. Uh, remember Barcelona uh, runway 25 right? There's a VOR just in the undershoot of the runway. It makes it really quite straightforward to uh, plan the arrival. The reason being in X-Plane, uh, the ILS. I've got the ILS tuned up here on box number one, uh, 109.5. The DME is uh, very limited in range. It only works out to about 19 miles. So by having the BCN tuned here at 39 miles, it gives us a reasonable uh, indication of distance to the threshold. Also around that BCN, I've drawn a 20 mile radius fix as well. If you think back to the ground school video, or if you've not seen it, uh, I'm going to aim to be at 5,000 feet uh, as I cross that 20 mile fix. Uh, currently we're at 10,000 feet. Using the three times table, I've got 5,000 feet to lose. So that means I need 15 miles. So 15 miles beyond 20 would be 35. And I'm going to use uh, approximately half the ground speed plus 10 percent. So about uh, 280 to 300 knots it's going to be in the region of 1500 to 1600 feet per minute. The target being 250 knots, 20 miles from the airfield and altitude 5000 feet. It's all tuned up so we'll just fly it and uh, have a look at how it goes. If we get to where we want to be we'll have a look at a missed approach as well. Okay, so I'll take the uh, autopilot, uh, I'll take the uh, pause off. Aircraft's flying on autopilot. And uh, we get clear down to an altitude of 5,000 feet when we're ready. So 5,000 feet selected. And as we approach, uh, let's say 36 miles, I'll start the aircraft going downhill. I've got the uh, bugs um, set appropriately here. Uh, maybe a little bit more background light. That's the approach speed, uh, VRF, VRF plus 15 and uh, 170 and 190 for the uh, cleaning up to flaps 1 and cleaning up to flap 0 for the missed approach. There's 36 miles coming up, so I'm going to select vertical speed and uh, ground speed. Well, let's go for 1500 initially. That'd be suitable for 300 knots ground speed. And we'll just monitor the descent as it goes. Watch the aircraft bring the thrust back to uh, hopefully idle thrust. If the speed creeps up just a, a little bit, I'm not overly worried about that just now. So I'm aiming to lose um, 5,000 feet over the course of 15 miles. So 3 miles per 1,000 feet, I started at 35, so 32, passing 9,000. That's looking good, it's on profile. Vertical speed required is uh, 1,400 plus 140. That gives me 1,500 or so, that's fine. And speed's holding back quite nicely, and we've got uh, idle thrust. You can see a 3 degree descent path works quite well in most jets. And uh, the uh, green energy line here is sitting right on that ring there, although I'm not using that as my reference to fly the aircraft this time. So 8,000 feet descending to 5,000 feet. That's 3,000 feet to lose. I need 9 miles. I want to be level at 20 and I've got 20 mile, 29 miles to go. It's spot on. If you've not seen my uh, ground school video, it's very much about the uh, the big picture. Obviously, these numbers vary uh, depending on um, how the aircraft's uh, performing, how much uh, drag the aircraft has, that sort of thing. Uh, it's just a, really a guide to get you started. But it works quite well in most cases. So passing 7,000 feet, I've got 2,000 feet to lose. 
that means I need 6 miles. Level it to 20 miles, so 26 miles will be the target. Again, that's spot on. Uh, about 280 knots, so 1500 feet would work still. And the speed's holding back quite nicely. Just uh, zoom that in just a little bit. So passing 6,000 feet, 1,000 feet to go to the 5,000 feet target. That's 3 miles. I want to be level at 20 miles. 23 miles. That's pretty good. Now hopefully at this point air traffic will clear us down to something like a 3,000 feet platform. So I select 3,000 feet in there. There we go. And uh, yeah, half of that, still about uh, 1,400, 1,500, that would be fine. What I don't want to do is I don't want to get high on the profile. So if I go a little bit underneath uh, optimal, that's uh, not a problem at all. So just less than one mile to go, 300 feet to lose. I think it's all going to, to work out here. So with that, I'll bring the speed target back to 210 knots. And uh, remember, I'll use one third now. So one third of the ground speed, um, let's have a look. So 900, 918, 27. You see, with that uh, reduced rate of um, descent, bring the speed target back, stays on idle thrust, and the speed starts to wash off. And I'm going to use 5 miles for every 1,000 feet. At this point, I've got a good DME from the ILS as well, so whilst everything's... Uh, quiet. I'll set the frequency here as well, 109.5. And back up here. Okay, so there's uh, 4,000 feet, 1,000 feet to lose, and uh, I've got 5.5 miles still to go. That's all looking good. Ground speed is uh, 247, so 8, 16, 24. I'll go for 8. But the other thing we can do now is um, I've got a good localizer, so alarm for lock, arm the approach mode, and uh, probably just a, a little bit of a tweak on the vector to make sure it captures here. So 500 feet to go, two and a half miles, I've got three and a half miles available. That's looking quite good. What I can do then is because I'm nicely under the profile, exactly where I want to be, I'll back the VS off to around 1600 feet. It's captured for lock at the moment, so if I bring that back to maybe four or five hundred feet or so, there's a chance that I'll uh, capture the glide slope before we uh, before we level off. Although I think there will be a level segment here. So it's looking pretty good now, uh, just approaching 210 knots. What I'll do is I'll select flaps one and select speed 190. It's gone into Alta Choir, that's fine. Clay slope's coming down, so if it does bring the thrust up, it'll only be for a second or so. Approaching 190, select flaps 5 and speed 180. Just momentarily bringing the thrust up and then it captures glide slope. I'll put the second autopilot in. And to keep life simple, uh, because I want a little bit of time to talk about the missed approach, I'll put the gear down, laps 15, and speed 150. Okay, so with the aircraft uh, decelerating, I'm going to fly the final stages of the um, approach manually, and I'll show you a manually flown uh, go around. I don't know uh, in real life what the 737's capability is uh, for doing a, a autopilot uh, go around. I think when it's in uh, auto land mode it uh, it does have a limited uh, go around capability. I can't quite remember that far back to the uh, 
the time I had in the 7377. So do a manually flown mist approach. So approaching uh, 150, I'm going to select flaps 30 and select the, uh, the app. So what's going to happen is um, when I go around, I'm going to push the toga button and simultaneously select flap 15. Follow the flight directors, uh, pitching up, making sure the thrust is coming up. And when I get a positive climb, uh, which is indicated by the altimeter going the correct way and the vertical speed uh, showing a climb, I'll put the gear up. The aircraft uh, flight directors, it'll target uh, a climb with flap 15 of the uh, VRF plus 15 here. That's that first bug there. When I get the acceleration altitude, I'll select flaps 5 and you'll see it drive the speed bug up uh, to help me accelerate. And then flaps 1 at flap 0. There's a little trap as well in a 737 missed approach that we might see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. While we're here, I'll just make sure that I've got something sensible for a missed approach uh, on the box. Should have done that before, but it's got it there. So once we're above 400 feet, I'll engage uh, LNAV. I've got a button on the joystick for that. So if you see LNAV coming in, that's because I've pushed the button on the stick. So it's uh, nicely stable. Uh, one of the things I also mentioned in the previous video is disengaging the auto thrust. A lot of people seem to be doing it with the R mode and I've been guilty of doing that as well. What we should do is disconnect it with the speed button here. Uh, so I'll take the auto thrust out with the speed button and it goes back to R mode. Uh, that's going to be important in a second. And uh, autopilot's coming out. So with the auto thrust in the arm mode, I've got low speed uh, protection. It means that if the speed decays, the autopilot or the auto thrust will bring the uh, will bring the power up. Flight directors are uh, not quite giving me the correct indication at the moment, but uh, looking out the window, it all looks okay. There we go. We're more or less on the centre line. Okay, so let's say at this point somebody taxis onto the runway ahead of us. I'm going to say go around, flaps 15, pitch to follow the flight directors, positive climb, gear up. Above 400 radio, I'll engage LNAV. You see it's commanding the uh, VRF plus 15. Above a thousand, I'll select uh, flaps five. You see it drives the speed target up. Keep following the flight directors. Above 170, flaps one. And above 190, Flap zero. There you go. MCP speeds and alt acquire. Centralize the flight directors. I'll put the autopilot in. There we go. Command A. When it captures alt acquire, it selects the uh, current speed the aircraft's got. That's one of the traps on the 737. Especially if you've got a low level uh, missed approach altitude, it'll uh, capture whatever speed it gets to when it goes into alt acquire. So you've got to be careful of that, uh, 210 being the minimum clean. At this point we get radar vectors uh, for another circuit, but uh, what we do is uh, the after takeoff and uh, after takeoff checks. So the aircraft's clean, we we'll select gear off, Auto break off and the igniters uh, are already off because I forgot to turn them on. But there we go. Okay, so at this point, expect radar vectors uh, maybe out, maybe out to the left for another uh, attempt. Whereas that's a, a standard uh, missed approach on the 737. I only clicked the uh, toga button once, so I get a reduced thrust uh, go around. If I clicked it a second time, it gave me a little bit more power as well. 
The uh, go around mode's vary, as I mentioned, for the uh, go around from an uh, automatic landing when it's set up that way. So I need to do a little bit more research on that uh, before I can bring you that content. But uh, that's a, a very standard uh, missed approach there. There we go. If you get any questions uh, on the video, as always, uh, leave them in the comments. If you've not seen the ground school video, um, if you have a look at that, that might make a little bit of sense what we're doing in the early part of this uh, this video as well. I hope you enjoyed watching it. It's uh, still a lot of fun flying the uh, IXEG737-300 and uh, there'll be some more content on the channel very shortly. Thanks very much.